first in high definition. From the station on your side, this is Wavy News 10. Norfolk City Council just heard five proposals about Waterside. Once booming with business, the prime piece of Norfolk real estate is a lot different on the inside now. Ten Year Sides' Melody Woodrow just left that meeting where city leaders heard the proposals to give Waterside a much needed boost. Melanie? Yeah, this is what we've been waiting for, and we're going to walk you through these five proposals. The, they are still meeting right now. The first is from developer Harvey Lindsay. Harvey Lindsay's proposal includes a conference center for Waterside, an overhead walkway, two mid-sized hotels, some parking, and enlarging the marina. Hopefully you guys are looking at a picture of what this proposal might look like. Now, the next proposal, there's no picture for this one, is by Beach Music Awards. John Aragona for Mark 7 Studios. That's a television uh, studio in Secaucus, New Jersey. They are proposing what's called the Norfolk Sound Beach Music Theme Venue. It would include three restaurants, some beach music cocktail lounge, and some supper club, as well as a dance club, theater and broadcast studios, and a comedy club. The third proposal on the table is by Dracar America. We do have a picture of this one and what it might look like. And they're proposing a multi-use pro sports complex in arena that could potentially one day host an NBA franchise. They also submitted a picture of what this might look like. The next proposal is by Project Neptune the third, and this is by a group known as Alvin James Development Group. They're proposing 150 hotel rooms and a sort of a dance club, three large nightclubs, a private members club, some restaurants, and an IMAX theater. The next proposal on the table is one that we do have a picture to show you of, and this is the Cordish proposal, and they are proposing a large entertainment and restaurant-themed experience that would include some live entertainment on the first floor, six restaurants, um, and, and using the existing space. You can see there in this picture some of the existing restaurants that are currently at Waterside. I think they're also proposing to expand the current marina. So, again, five proposals on the table. This is certainly a lot to take in. We're just getting this information but we have put all of this information, including the pictures, on our website, wavy.com. I want to let you know what's happening right now. So if you want to get a closer look at these proposals, head on over to our website. In the meantime right now, council, including Mayor Frame, is questioning what's not in this packet, and that is the financing around these. Uh, we've been hearing that this is just a pitch for right now and that certainly there'd be some public input, but Mayor Frame is saying how could the public possibly comment on these proposals if they don't know how much these proposals might cost? And so there's some discussion going on right now about whether or not the public is entitled to know just how much these proposals would cost. Mayor Frame saying that he wants this process to be as transparent as possible and that there is a lot of community interest interest in what is done to the water side. So we're going to hop back inside and we'll have more for you tonight at 530. Again, if you want to check these out, get a closer look yourself, head on over to wavy.com. Guys? All right, thank you. Melanie Woodrow live. A man hit by a truck in front of his house in Virginia Beach is out of the hospital. Doctors have released David Yancey. Two of the three children also hit Thursday are still in the hospital, one in critical condition. Police say Sandra Hofstetler was driving under the influence when she went around a stop school bus and ran over the family of four on Chester Street. Hofstadler's behind bars, charged with DUI, reckless driving, and assault. In Smithfield, a man working on his car in a parking lot died tragically. Detectives say the car rolled on top of the man late last night in the Smithfield Plaza shopping center. We're told the vehicle was still running at the time. Now, police are still looking closely at this. They've not identified the victim, and they are still investigating. Chesapeake police say they arrested two suspects in a pizza delivery driver robbery. The crime happened at around 8.30 last night outside an apartment complex on Merchant's Court in the Greenbrier area. Police say Brian Falcon and Brandon Smith walked up to the Papa John's driver when she got out of her car and robbed the woman at gunpoint. The victim was not hurt. Two other local pizza delivery drivers were targeted over the weekend. Suffolk police say two suspects pointed a shotgun at a Pizza Hut delivery driver Sunday night outside an apartment complex on East Washington Street. They stole money and food from the driver. The victim was not hurt. And early Saturday morning, someone shot a Chanello's pizza delivery driver on the job in Newport News. Police say someone shot 22-year-old Jamal Somerville several times in the stomach and legs when he got out of the car on Jeb's place in the East End. At last check, Somerville was in critical condition. Police say he wanted to buy marijuana, and he left his three young children to make the deal. 
So they arrested 27-year-old Linnell Holloman of Suffolk during an apparent drug transaction. Ten of your side's Ava Hurdles in the newsroom with more on this story. Ava? Tom Holloman is not only facing a drug count, but child neglect charges as well. A knock at Linnell Holloman's door got this response. I'm not. Can we talk to you about this allegation that you left the kids home alone to buy weed? No. No comment. But Suffolk police say Holloman was here in the 2500 block of East Washington Street around 7.30 Monday night when an officer observed a suspected narcotics transaction and nabbed Holloman across town from his home. Ultimately charged that individual with possession of 12 baggies of marijuana. Um, when he was placing the subject in custody, the subject advised the officer that he needed to make a phone call because he had left his children home alone. Police don't know how long the kids, ages 4, 3, and 1, were left alone. Fortunately, the children appeared to be unharmed. Uh, they didn't indicate that they were hungry, and the officer that was there uh, purchased them some food, um, and then they contacted a responsible party. The children were turned over. I saw the cops out front, and when I listened to my police scanner, they were searching his car. Holloman's neighbor says she finds the allegation hard to believe. I haven't seen him leave the kids home alone because his wife is usually there, and when he's not there, his wife is, because I've seen him leave and his wife come outside and the kids be there, so I've seen him. She says if the allegation is true, she finds it irresponsible. Now, police tell us the children's mother was at work at the time. The marijuana allegedly involved in this case has a street value of $600. I'm Ava Hurdle, 10 on your side. In addition to the police investigation, a Suffolk spokesperson says Child Protective Services is also looking into this. A former Virginia Beach lawyer will spend five years in prison for stealing more than $390,000 from the estate of a deceased client. A federal jury convicted 52-year-old Brian Gay last October on fraud charges. Gay was the executor of a te an estate of a Virginia Beach man who died in 2006. According to court documents, Gay used money from life insurance intended for the man's minor children to buy himself a house in Florida and two motorcycles. And the case of the missing college basketball jerseys is solved. They are back at ODU's team's locker room. Coach Blaine Taylor said the players noticed the jerseys missing Saturday night. He says someone broke into the locker room at the TED and stole them from inside a travel bag. This morning, the member of the ground crew found a bag with jerseys, shoes, and shorts in the parking lot, but police have not made any arrests. Thousands of people are paying their respects to legendary coach Joe Paterno at Penn State. Paterno died Sunday after a short battle with lung cancer just two months after being fired in the wake of a child sex abuse scandal involving his longtime assistant Jerry Sandusky. Current players joined Paterno's family for a private viewing this morning. Now faculty, former players, the public, and the man who took over to finish the season are remembering and honoring his life and legacy. I was lucky enough to play for him and, and uh, work with him and be able to call him friend and uh, had a great impact on my life in so many ways that, uh, you know, and I've been quoted as saying this, you know, next to my father, he was the guy. Remember, you don't think that Virginia Beach native DJ Dozier played for Coach Paterno in the late 80s. Wavy Sports Director Bruce Rader interviewed the former NFL and Major League Baseball star this afternoon. Dozier says he doesn't think Coach Paterno was treated fairly. When he needed the university the most, uh, they threw him under the bus. And so to see the way he was handled um, at, without due process was, um, I think it was a mistake and um, one of the great um, blunders, unfortunately, um, in, in our university's history. Dozier shares his memories of Coach Paterno he knew ahead tonight on Wavy News 10 at 5.30. Should Virginia Beach take over the lifeguard services at the oceanfront at 5.30? Find out how much the city says it will save. And he's not a real patient, but he's teaching real-life lessons. These simulators are the most state-of-the-art machines you can have. How this local professor's creation could one day save your life. A poisoning hazard. We're on your side with details about a lunchbox recall. Gorgeous day. Lots of sunshine. Temperatures topped off into the low 60s. A little cooler right now in Norfolk. And it's going to get a lot cooler coming up for tomorrow. We'll tell you about the cool down expected in just a few minutes. You're watching Wavy News 10 at 5 with Tom Shad, Nicole Libus and Super Doppler 10 Chief Meteorologist Don Slater.
That check from the unemployment office may be late because a phone line went down. The call center at Virginia Employment Commission usually handles about 3,500 calls on Mondays, people verifying their efforts to find work. The problem right now is fixed, and the VEC says no checks will be withheld, but some could end up in your mailbox a day late. Richmond-based CarMax says it is hiring more than 965 people at its stores across the company. The used car chain says the majority are in sales and service operations. There are also positions in purchasing and the business office. There are job openings at the CarMax stores in Newport News and Virginia Beach. We posted a link on wavy.com under Virginia News. And while you're there, scroll over to the On Your Side tab and check out Job Finder 10. You can search jobs for free and employers can post positions for free. Poison is never a term you want to see in the same sentence as lunchbox, but that's the hazard behind a lunchbox recall. Costco sold these insulated lunchboxes with fr freezer gel packs in 07 and 08. The Consumer Product Safety Commission says gel can leak from the freezer packs if they're damaged. A dog died after it chewed and ingested gel from one of those packs. The thermal carrier and plastic food containers we understand are safe. And you can find out more about this recall. Just go to wavy.com. Your morning glass of OJ may cost you more. The Wall Street Journal reports orange juice prices settled at a new high Monday. There are concerns over imports from Brazil after traces of a fungicide not approved in the U.S. were found in juice samples from there. The FDA says orange juice imports from Canada, Mexico, Honduras, Costa Rica and Belize are safe. Recent cold snaps in Florida are also contributing to price hike fears. Experts say prices will rise within a couple of weeks. Products in your home could affect the effectiveness of vaccines. Ten on Your Side has results of new research on children's health. Taking real life threatening situations into the classroom. See how a local professor's creation could one day save your life. Patients in Hampton Roads hospitals may have an edge when it comes to treatment for severe respiratory issues. That's because the therapist treating you may be among the first in the nation to train on cutting-edge technology. Tending your side, Stephanie Harris stumbled across this program at Tidewater Community College in Virginia Beach. Steph? That's right, Tom. We went there to cover another event, and we met an associate professor doing something revolutionary with these mannequins here, something that could lead to you getting better care in the hospital. The patient's name is Arnie. He's not real, but he's about as close as you can get. Arnie, can you say something? He sweats, he cries, and his fingers can turn blue. It was very scary. <laughs> Respiratory therapy students have used mannequins for several years, but never like this. There's no other place in the U.S. is doing this right now. Associate Professor Gary Cross took real-life patient scenarios and recreated them in computer programs. They are autonomous, meaning you treat them, they respond, you treat them well, they get better, you treat them badly, they can die. And that does happen. Watch these students struggle to save their patient. Getting tired, she got tired, she is, you compress for a while. You can feel their frustration and eventually defeat. I called it and said, give me the time of death. They looked up at the clock. It's hard to relive, but the beauty of this is that they can. They get to watch themselves kind of like a football player watches a game. And then they can see that's where I went wrong. So next time they can get it right. We actually did save him. And the more patients they save in here, the better the odds for real patients in the future. Okay. Across the simulation program is the first in his field, and it could become TCC's first patented work. Stephanie Harris, 10 on your side. TCC Honor Professor Cross with its first Batten Fellowship Award to do the simulator work. Frank Batten, former publisher of the Virginian Pilot and founder of the Weather Channel, gave a million dollars to establish that fellowship back in 2005. Women apparently feel pain more intensely than men. Researchers reviewed pain scores of 72,000 adults. Women reported more pain than men in just about every category. These gender differences could be important in research on how effective pain medications are for both men and women. There is new evidence that certain chemicals might affect how well childhood vaccines work. Researchers found children who were exposed to chemicals called PFCs often had lower immune systems, immune responses that is, to vaccines. 
PFCs are used to make some products stain and water resistant. The American Chemistry Council said industry analysts are carefully reviewing the study. Now, in high definition, your Super Doppler 10 forecast with Chief Meteorologist Don Slater. Not a bad day at all, and temperatures topped off into the low 60s. Got lots of sunshine, but things are going to change. We're going to see a day of cold weather, or colder weather anyway, moving on in, and we're going to see that coming up for tomorrow. Skies are mostly clear. I want to show you where our next weather maker is coming from. The next rain maker really is going to be coming from. You can see it down in Louisiana where there, there is some rainfall already. It's going to take a while to get here, uh, but get here it will. Here's how things will be moving over the next couple of days. Again, we're watching for this. We'll We'll end up with lots of sunshine for tomorrow. Uh, and we'll see the clouds move in later in the day. Now, toward the northern neck, we could see a stray shower tomorrow night or Thursday. But for most of us, we're likely to be rain free into Thursday. However, the clouds will start moving on in, uh, and that rain will really move in for Friday. We can see around half an inch to an inch of rain. That's the uh, current projection as far as rainfall out of that. Few clouds later on in the afternoon today. A little puff of cooler air has dropped on in and cooled things off near the coastline, especially for right now. Flip the winds over to the northeast, uh, and that's dropped the temperatures near the water's edge, but farther inland, it's a little warmer. It's closer to 60, but it's around 55 degrees near the coastline. Here's where things are overnight. A couple of straight clouds, but mostly clear skies. North, northeasterly winds to start the day, 5 to 10. Becoming northeasterly, 5 to 10 miles an hour. It's going to be a cooler tomorrow. Highs only into the low 50s. Here's where we are by the end of the day. Some thin clouds start moving on in and the thicker clouds move in overnight. Now, again, we could see a stray shower basically uh, from Williamsburg northward in the early morning hours of Thursday, really the pre-dawn hours of Thursday. But look at the southerly breeze. It'll warm right back up. There's where things are at the noon hour and at the end of the day you saw some rain again toward the northern neck. But the bulk of the rain, as we showed you on that wider picture, is way on off to the west and that's not likely to move in until Friday morning. Today, again, beautiful day, few thin clouds. Clouds. Uh, you'll be able to see, it's kind of fun, you'll be able to see it on this building right there, uh, real, real bright. Well, I covered it up, but you'll be able to see it in a second here. Uh, temperatures, 1 o'clock in the morning, it was 63 degrees. It dropped a little bit, warmed back up, and then dropped a bit as, uh, again, we saw a breeze come in off the water for Norfolk. Uh, but for Newport News, again, 61 degrees uh, later on in the afternoon hours. And for Suffolk, we bounced around a bit, and it was basically been into the mid-60s during the afternoon. So very, very nice warm day. And we've got temperatures right now, 55 in Newport News, 56 in Norfolk and Virginia Beach, uh, 63 in Suffolk and Chesapeake, 54 in Hampton. High today, 64, well, dropped a degree uh, in Chesapeake. Uh, so again, we are looking at temperatures basically into the mid-50s to around the 60-degree mark for right now. It is going to get colder overnight. We'll drop on down into the upper 30s during the day tomorrow. So uh, mid-60s today, 51. That's it for tomorrow. Some late-day cloud cover. Uh, and again, 57, definitely warmer for Thursday, warmer than that on Friday, but with a very good chance of rain. And then it gets cooler for the weekend and beyond. <clears throat> a vacation turned into a nightmare after an avalanche buried a man alive. Watch as his friends frantically try to find him underneath the snow. Nobody's going to become a millionaire over the cost of Concordia crash. Find out why survivors of the Italian cruise ship accident will not be able to sue the cruise line in the U.S. How about this? A wave flipped a police boat while officers were searching for a missing boy. And the cameras were rolling as the Australian crew was thrown from the boat. There it is. They saw the wave coming. They were able to brace themselves for the impact. The officers, we understand, were not hurt. They were looking for an eight-year-old who went swimming last night and got caught in a riptide. So far, that child has not been found. A man was buried alive in an avalanche and lived to tell about it. Here you can see the snow heading right for John Swanson on his snowmobile. Look at this. In seconds, he was buried alive on the mountain in Washington State. Lucky for him, they knew exactly where he was. I knew that I was buried enough in snow that I couldn't move. I mean, I just was suffocating in the snow. And once his head was out, you know, then I was a lot more relieved. And, you know, he was just saying, get me out, get me out. His friends started digging and got him out in less than a minute. That's a story he'll be telling for a long time, I'm sure. And glad to tell it, too. Yes. Starting next month, visitors to Disneyland and Walt Disney World will see something never seen before. 
will tell you how the happiest place on earth is loosening up a little bit. For me, I felt bad for, for the wife and the kids. Coming up at 5.30, a Hampton Roads native and former Penn State football star talks to sports director Bruce Rader. Hear his memories of legendary coach Joe Paterno. Hey guys, check, 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 one, two, one, two, check, 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 check. What? Okay, thank you. Hello, Hello Matt. Check, 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 check. Hello, one. Kim. The changing faces of Disney, the employees or cast members as they're called, can now grow beards and goatees. Disney had prohibited all facial hair on its theme park workers since Disneyland opened back in the 1950s. Well, the company revised its policy in 2000 to allow mustaches as long as they were grown on vacation and not at work. Employees welcome the change, but some visitors don't like it. I think that a little bit of individuality between the cast members is not a bad thing. Uh, I think that people can have facial hair and still be beautiful and clean cut and wholesome. The clean look makes them more approachable, makes it less scary for the kids, and I think a better example as well. The change starts February 3rd. The new policy also allows workers in areas without visitor contact to have casual Fridays. Stay with us. Wavy News 10 at 530 starts right now.